So now I would like to give you some information about change routing into QAMO, um, which is um, on the seamless M68K and how I work with that. And, and that work is, is heavily based on the documentation by Adrian, um, the, the great Debian M68K QMOS build, and also on the QMO version from Laurent that we have just seen. Uh, also, of course, it's building on QMO, which is originally from Fabrice Bellar and the QMO team. And of course, on, on Linux from, uh, sorry, from Linus Torvalds, it should be, and not Linux Torvalds, uh, and the Linux community. So uh, QMO has different emulation modes. You can run it in a full system emulation mode or in a user emulation mode. And if you run it in a system emulation mode, it emulates a full computer system. So it includes all, this, it emulates the CPU, the memory, the storage devices and other peripherals. And it runs the native operating system. Uh, so in case of Linux, the Linux M68K operating system does not need to be changed to run inside Q QMO. At least if it r runs in QMO, that is emulating um, an existing hardware like the Quadra 800. So this is a picture that explains the system emulation. This is not QMO started, but we have a physical machine. Here it's a, a 64K uh, Intel AMD machine. And there's hardware, there's a Linux kernel, and there are some user space applications running like Emacs or Vim. And then we start QAMO, which also runs in user space. And that then has its own hardware emulation, which emulates the M68K hardware. And it runs a Linux kernel on top of that. And then inside the emulation, on top of the emulated Linux kernel, we have user space apps uh, like Nano and, and Vim and uh, maybe Emacs as well. So this is the system emulation. And then there's user mode emulation, which is currently available for Linux and FreeBSD. And it emulates a user mode environment. So it emulates the environment that a Linux or FreeBSD application wants to see in, to be able to run. It, it traps, so it catches the system calls and forwards them to the, to the native kernel. And then the, the user mode the application, they see the emulated Linux or FreeBSD system, and it can run unmodified Linux or FreeBSD binaries. Of course, it only runs Linux binaries on Linux or FreeBSD binaries on FreeBSD. You can't run FreeBSD binaries on Linux QMO user mode emulation. For that, you would need to have a full emulation. Uh, so in some regards, it's similar to the older user mode Linux, where it was able to run binaries from uh, the same architecture, but in a in its own enclosed uh, Linux environment, very much like an early container system. But with QMO user mode, you can do that with binaries from a different architecture, not only the same architecture. So this is a picture showing the user mode emulation. So every application that is running in user mode, every Nano, every Vim, every Emacs, has its own QMO running. It's not one big QMO that emulates a kernel and the hardware. It is just a QMO that provides the different CPU emulation. And then uh, the gateway, the, the emulation of the system calls to the Linux kernel. And here we have both side by side. On the right side, we have the system emulation. On the left side, we have the user space emulation. And as you see here, the, the, the errors show the, the way that system calls need to take in order to reach the, um, the kernel that is running on the real hardware. And on the user mode emulation, it's almost directly going from the uh, application to the Linux kernel, while in this full system emulation, it goes from the emulated application to the emulated Linux kernel from there to the emulated hardware, from there to the real Linux kernel, from there to the real hardware, which is more steps in between, more layers. And what are the benefits of this QMO user mode? It is just seamless. Um, you can copy and paste from your terminal. Uh, 
Uh, it's not any graphical emulation where you have problems uh, like copy and pasting some text from a terminal from the emulated application to your native environment. You can, in scripting, like in a make file, you can just mix and match native tools and emulated tools. And it is really easy to have data exchange because everything is in the same file system. It does better CPU and memory utilization compared to full system emulation because every process runs inside its own QMO process. So you can make use of uh, uh, symmetric multi-processing even using an architecture that does not support it yet, like the M68K. And the U Linux scheduler then can distribute the QMO process onto the different CPU cores. So if you have a, an 8-core, 12-core, 24-core machine, you can really make use of that in the emulation. And it's less overhead because there's no hardware emulation and no emulated kernel. Of course, there's some overhead, but it's less than with a full emulation. So what do we need to do to set up such a QMO user mode? So well, these instructions are for Debian. It should work for other Linux distros as well. It even works inside a Linux container. So in my setup, I have a Fedora Linux system. And there I start a Debian systemd endspawn container. And there I do the QMO M68K. Um, because uh, Linux containers have almost no overhead, uh, this is just easily doable. The instructions are available on the M68K info uh, side with this uh, link here. And they will be linked from the main page uh, later today. So we start uh, installing all the dependencies uh, for building QMO. And this is the list of the dependencies today in Debian 10 for QMO. Um, the instructions from Adrian have a much better way to install the dependencies by asking the uh, Debian Packet Manager to install all the dependencies. Unfortunately, for uh, during my test, that appears to be broken. And I have to put more work into that to figure out what's broken there. So uh, I found this is the current set that works. Of course, that might be outdated in two weeks' time or tomorrow. So after installing the dependencies, uh, we are uh, building the QMO user mode. And I used uh, the um, special QMO version from Laurent for that, because it works just very, very nicely. Uh, so uh, this is the commands to clone the GitHub repository and then to configure the M68K Linux user mode. And we built a static binary because that's very important if you want to have uh, the ability to, to start 68K Linux into a container or into a change route. Because then the QMO must be self-contained uh, because the, the Linux loader is then not able to find all the, the, the dynamic libraries uh, if you change routes over. Or you have to copy everything over, which is messy. So after compiling a QMO, we then install the QMO user static binaries, which also sets up the, the bin format rules that allows the Linux kernel to detect foreign architecture binaries and has the ability to, to start that. So after installing that, we strip the build uh, QMO M68K binary and copy that over the currently installed binary in user bin. Uh, next, we need a Debian with uh, a Debian for 68K. Uh, we can do that with the bootstrap. So first we install the, the bootstrap and the Debian ports archive keyring. And then we create a directory where our M68K directory and the whole Linux uh, root file system will live, live. And I use SRV change root for that, but it can be any directory. And then we debootstrap in uh, there which means that we um, download the base packages of a Debian system. Here it's Debian unstable, the, um, the current working uh, version of Debian. 
And we do that for the architecture M68K. Now this one has a no check GPG, so it's insecure and someone can man in the middle us and just uh, sneak uh, um, malicious code into there. Uh, I, I've used that because um, the packages are signed with the key, which are not in the usual Debian 10. I already found between writing these instructions and um, and uh, tonight giving this this presentation a way to uh, to fix this. Uh, and I will also change this the directories and uh, how to import the proper keys for that. Uh, so you can either, can either do this, but just be aware that this is insecure. Uh, or uh, you can look over the weekend and I have the, the updated uh, instructions how to import the proper key and then uh, have it uh, check the signatures. So, and then we copy the, uh, the, the QAMO user mode binary, the AMD64 binary inside the create a change root directory. And that will be the only binary that is uh, AMD64 inside uh, a Linux root directory that is all M68K otherwise. And then we check the bin format configuration. You can just uh, do a cat on proxys fs bin format misc qmo dash m68k and that should should list um, that that file should be present and it should list the uh, qmo m68k static binary so we copy that over to be sure i copy that with two different names one is qmo m68k static and one is just qmo m68k because the different uh, bin formats uh, sometimes have uh, the different names and uh, this way it, it just works uh, always. And then we can change root into that uh, directory and that's the moment of truth. If that works without an error message um, and you get just a prompt back, then everything has worked just fine. And if you do a uname minus a, you'll see that you are in an M68K um, uh, Linux running on top of a 4.19.0-12 AMD64 kernel. So it's a strange mix. It's this M68K Linux installation running on an AMD64 Linux kernel because it's the AMD64 Linux kernel that gets the system calls. And if that works, we can uh, do the second stage of the bootstrap to finishing the Debian installation there. And usually then I install systemd, but you can also in install any other init system that you prefer. And I set a password for the root account because that's required to be able to log into the system after booting that machine with systemd and spawn in a container. And then I exit from that. And then we are ready to, to use the system. Uh, there are different ways to use the system. One is to use change root. In order to have a full working change root system, we first have to bind mount uh, several uh, pseudo boot, uh, file system into the, the change root. And that is the proc, the sys, and the dev, and the dev PTS file systems. And when we have done that, we change root into that directory, and we have a fully working uh, Linux that we can use, and it's an M60K uh, Linux that we can use. Or, uh, and that's easier because we don't have to bind mount any directories. We can just uh, use systemd and spawn to create a Linux container. And that container will contain an M68K uh, a Linux running there. And we do that with systemd and spawn and then minus D is for directory, pointing to the directory with the um, installed Debian M68K. And we can even boot that system so that we have a running systemd and we get a, a, a login prompt from logindy with systemd and spawn minus b for booting minus d for directory and then the path to our system. And now we can use the M68K Linux uh, system just as normal. So we can install packages. Uh, it has network. It, it uses the, the network from the host. Uh, we can develop software, we can play games even and enjoy life and have fun.
And now for a little demo. So here I am uh, on a Debian system that is in the cloud. There we are. If we are, if I look into that directory, it's um, a Linux root system, and the files inside that directory. So if I look at bin bin bash, um, that's Motorola M68K uh, software there. So the easiest way to go in there is to do a change root into that. And now I'm in the emulation. So I can use this system just as normal. And it is an M68K GNU Linux system. And I, I really don't see any difference here. Oh, I don't have mounted the, the proc file system. We'll show that later. But I can just do anything in here, like install. Um, OK, that's that's a Go program that is not available. Uh, what can I install here? Um, do we have grep? It's already installed. Mm. So this now uses the network of the host system, and I can just install uh, stuff there. Uh, let me exit and start tmux so that uh, I can show below. I need to make the font a little bit smaller. Um, below, you now see the, the, the htop. Uh, on the host system. And I will systemd n spawn minus boot minus directory. Into the QMO M68K. Uh, it's already busy. That means I'm still, I'm already running that somewhere. Yeah. Let me quickly um, go out here. So every directory can just start at once. You can't start many um, directories on, from the same file system. So this is the command system, the spawn minus boot minus directory, uh, and then the directory where I have installed the 68K Linux. And now it's booting up. And on the htop below, you see that the processes that are running are actually prefixed with uh, user bin QMO M68K static and then S bin A getty. And I'm logging in here. And what I see here is now the top from the, the container. And it's actually not that much running there. So it's just systemd, dbus, uh, the login, the bash, and the top program that's running there. And let's do a software update. And now you see on the bottom, you see a lot of QMO uh, M68K static processes running that for every process, uh, the QMO is started. And now this emulated system here, this system in the cloud just has one CPU. Uh, and that is now fully utilized. But if you have uh, a multi-core CPU, um, the different QMO processors will just utilize all the CPU power that you have on your system. And that's really nice if you have one of these uh, nice modern Ryzen CPU machines, because then compiling stuff on, uh, on M68K, for example, a Firefox or, or something similar is uh, much, much faster 
than doing that on an on a purely system emulated system. It's uh, still not as fast as a as a native system. I mean, as a six eight four system, uh, but it is actually very usable. So it's downloading and then installing, and you will see installing is quite fast, even um, with all the system call rewriting that is necessary to bridge between uh, M68K and the AMD64 Linux. Yep, yeah, and we are done.